Zach Sang and the gang. Zach Sang and the gang right now in the studio. B. Miller, hello, hello. What's up? Yeah. But how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Dude, you're, you're a cool chick. Yeah. Uh, you're literally talking, you know, you're not like most of the people who walk into the studio every day. Like, you're just not. How? I, <laughs> you're more, I mean, let's be, if we're going to be real, I mean, I told you, we've been doing this forever, for a long time. Uh, you know, everyone's come in here. I've interviewed everybody. And with you, it's just a different air. You're very grounded. You're you're so not Hollywood, really. I, I, I just see it in you. I feel like you're just... You're chill. Yeah, you're chilling. You, you go yeah. by a different beat. I'm glad that you guys appreciate that because I feel like most people probably think I'm the most boring, most uninteresting, annoying, obnoxious, rude person no, in the world because I'm man. not so like super peppy when I meet new people. I'm just yeah, yeah. peppy is overrated. I'm just talking to you guys the way I talk to all my friends, just like chilling. But I, I, I think, feel like it's too overdone to be like, oh my god, hi, hi, nice to meet you. It's, it's fake. fake. And how much of that do you experience in Los Angeles on a daily mm. basis? Uh, uh, Every day, all the time, twenty four seven. It's like all there is there. People are either like completely ignore you, yeah. or which just, I prefer that. I yeah. prefer to be they completely either, ignored. They either completely ignore you because they think they're better than you, right. or they're just like, oh my god, like I love you so much, and like three minutes after you meet them, you're my best friend. Oh my god. Yeah, I hate that. I hate when I just meet somebody I and they're like, can't. love you. Like, yeah. do you really? Yeah. Do you no, really? You know the definition of love? And then like when someone says love you, you have to be like, mm, love you too. Yeah. Like I don't want to <laughs> yeah. say that. You, you too. Okay. So. Uh, Nat Wolf or Nat Wolf and Alex Wolf, uh, they used to do whenever some like a Hollywood person would come and say I love you, they would look back into their eyes and say I don't even know you, <laughs> and then they would be done. And, and then like they'd awkward. Walk away. Like, there are so many instances that we were out and they would do that to people. And I'm like, I love that. Oh my god, I don't know if I respect you for it. Or you just made the whole room <laughs> go, awesome. go silent, like crazy. I love that. That's I awesome. respect that. Yeah, so me high. too. That's so cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, uh, making friends in LA okay for you? Honestly, I have to be honest. I have like three or four friends that yeah. I can actually be around for more than a couple hours at a time <laughs> yeah, without girl. going completely insane. A lot of and I have in LA, like you need I have limits. two people that I can trust in all of LA. Like I, there, there's not really that many people that actually like tell personal information and no. Oh, no. share secrets with because I just... You don't want to because you yeah, never no. know where it's going to end Because up. all those people that I know, they tell me about other people that I don't really know right. all the time. It's like if you're talking all this crap about someone else, like how do I know gonna... that you're not going to do that oh, yeah. to me? To, you yeah. know, it's, it's not And cool. they totally will. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> if you I'm think just they will, they will. Kind of keep to myself. Good. A lot. So let's talk Good about start. let's talk about you and your story because you really essentially were kind of just plucked out of New Jersey via X Factor. I mean, you went to audition, but you went from New Jersey to a record deal, to, to, from New Jersey to being on TV, to a major record deal, to a single on the radio, moving to California. I mean, life has happened a lot for you in the past few years. Like, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Just, I mean, do you like it? Do you like what's going on? If I didn't like it, I wouldn't do it. True. <laughs> see, <laughs> honest, again, honest answer. Again, some people would some sit people here. Some people do it, yeah. Some yeah. people do it just to do it. doesn't matter. Yeah. They, they, they do it. A lot of people do it for it. fame, too, which I don't understand. Because I think the whole, like, a fame is such a ridiculous concept. If you really think about it, it's like mm -hmm. people are only famous because everyone else wants something to aspire to be and look up to. And, like, they want proof that life can be better somehow. And, like, that's not necessarily what fame yeah. means. Famous kind of, I feel so bad for people who are just so, so famous that they can't even walk outside. Like, how do you do that? It's, it's how scary. How do you do that? And, like, I love performing and I love, like, making music and being able to express how I feel to yeah. people and help them get through the day. Mm -hmm. And I wish that fame didn't come along with that sometimes because I just think that's such a, like, pathetic concept almost. Just mm -hmm. kind of, like, people who are... People who do this just to be famous aren't yeah. in it for the right reasons. Well, does it mm -hmm. does it scare you sometimes, the thought of getting so famous that you can't leave your house? It does scare me because if I were ever to be so huge that I couldn't, like, go out to eat with my friends, like, that'd be horrible. I don't yeah. even... And I hear that a lot of celebrities, like, have to... Yeah. Close out an entire store in a mall oh, to go totally. shopping, I mean, I and can, like people are just staring at them the entire time they're shopping and like taking pictures of them. Like, I mean, that's I, awful. I can tell you. I mean, some of my best friends are crazy famous. When we go out, things are closed down. Like when yeah. we go to a theme park, the whole entire theme park knows that we're there because the wait, the the, the lines to get on your ride go from an <laughs> hour and a half to three and a half hours because they closed down the ride and we're escorted up the exit. It's a crazy. It's cr and. I just feel like that'd be weird. It's crazy. <laughs> and not to, you know, just being kind of on the outside looking into that, right? I see the exact same thing that you're saying. It truly is incredible. It, it, I mean, to, I mean, some of my friends have, you know, ho hundreds of kids that just chill outside of their apartments. Yeah. That's you know? so weird. Like, mm -hmm. I just, ah. 
like I like I obviously like really want to do this, and like I'm glad that I have like fans and I I have a fan base, but like the idea that so many people could potentially know who I am in the future is kind of scary. Yeah, like I love that. I wish that they could just support my music and like me as a person, and then not be like creepy and And even not not crap. (laughs) Yeah, how about about also not even know who you are? Like you know, Sia has a huge career. I've always wished that I had done like the whole singing in the rain thing, where you like you know, like I'll be on stage, I'll be be behind the scenes, and then someone else will be on stage, yeah, pretending that it's them. But I feel like the reason that people like you so much is because you're so real and. Because uh, you walk in here and you're honest and you're truthful and you don't look at somebody in the face and you don't lie to them. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not all peppy. Like yeah. you can, you know, you walk into my building and you did whatever the hell you wanted. You wanted to stare mm-hmm. at the hallway for <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> you just stared at the hallway for 10 minutes. It was a cool hallway. Yeah. It's a very cool hallway. I took a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because you're just real. I feel like that's why people like you. And that's a crazy thing to think about sometimes. Yeah. Tell me about your music. Where does it come from? Where does the you know the inspiration come from? Where does it stem from inside you? I think inspiration is all around you at all times. And if you are a creative person, you yeah. are just inspired by absolutely everything around mm-hmm. you. And um, anything. I mean, I didn't write all of my. I didn't write any of my music by myself. Um, okay. If I did write my music, it was co-writes. Um, and then some of the songs I just heard them. They were played for me, and I was like, "This is incredible! I have to record it because I feel like I, I feel this, and yeah, I'm cool. so passionate about this song. I've experienced this, or whatever it is." Um, but I do a lot of writing, like in journals. I write mm-hmm. poetry and stuff, and it's just it just stems from the most random situations. Like I can be looking out a car window and suddenly come up with the craziest thing about something that happened to me four years ago, and like write a, a poem about it. And, and it's, it's cool just, now. It's cool it's now just, you have an outlet to like do that. Like certain little yeah. things remind you, and yeah. then you know, like it's it's very strange um, when you're a creative person to to really like try to think about all the things that you've written about. Because sometimes right. I write about the the most random things, or sometimes I'll look at like a freaking water bottle and yeah. I'll write a poem about some dude. Like, <laughs> what <laughs> even is that? You know what I mean? Like. Oh, like you used to bring, drink the same brand of wa- uh, of water. So like now I have to write a whole poem. Do you? You know what I mean? Because obviously naturally you're you're creative. Excuse me. Well, I just had lunch. But as you <laughs> you rise through it, there's more people involved in what you create. Do you feel like your creativeness, your creative vibes, your creative energy is being stifled? Is it being constrained? Is it being celebrated? I yeah. What? How is it? What is it? Do you feel like you have more people like, to answer to now? You can't just go and you can't, you know, do you get what I'm talking about? Because I feel it here every day, right? Yeah. Like, even we feel it here every day when we create stuff and we have a formula and we have a guideline that people have put down upon right. us and they it's say this is like, how it's going to work. Here are, you know, here's the white line and the yellow line. Yeah. Here's your lane. Uh huh. And you can swerve anywhere around your lane, but don't go over e- either of the exactly. lines. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so. I can be creative to a certain extent, but if I wanted to have a song where I just, like, dropped the F-bomb four times, it'd be like, absolutely not. No matter how, like, creative and cool and yeah. emotional the song was, like, there are boundaries. Um, and it's really hard sometimes when you have a bunch of different creative people and they all have their inputs. Yeah. And it's just, like, sometimes um, I sit back and I'm like, well, this is me. Yeah. You know, like, I just want to be me because I have such a hard time doing things I don't want to do because I'm yeah. a very stubborn well, person. Yeah, yeah. And I just like to be real with people and if I have to do something that I don't really want to do um, because it's, you know, the best business decision, yeah, I have a really hard time accepting that sometimes. It's and hard. I, and I know that, you know, everyone around me is trying to help me and they have all oh, been yeah. doing this for so much longer and they're trying yeah. to give me whatever advice that they can possibly give me to, you know, send me further through my career successfully. But sometimes I'm just so stubborn that I'm like, no, I want to do what I want. <laughs> so I, I, they do support, like, everyone around me supports most of my creative decisions. That sometimes I get a, I go a little overboard. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to be like, no. Wait, <laughs> I, do, you in. I do that all the time. Uh, our producer, Heather, had a car. Um, it was her old car. It was her Honda. It was really crappy. And I wanted to give away the old car on the air. <laughs> like, I just wanted to do it. Like, I'll buy the car from you. Like, whatever you need. Just let me give it away on the air. Yeah. And they said, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Why? That's what I said. <laughs> I said, here's the deal. I'm going to give away the car. They have to drive to me to get it. Nobody's going to drive to me and want to get it. It's a great gimmick. It's awesome. We're giving away a free car on the air. And it just happens to be a piece of crap. They can take it and they can do whatever they want with it. And I was trying to do an art it. piece. Right? right? See, that's, cre- that's what creative people would do with it. That'd be kind of sick. Like, if I had a lot of space and I could just go somewhere just and, like, 
play around. Are you overall creative? Are you so much more than just music? Because you're telling me about wanting to direct. I feel like yeah. you're creative in every facet. Yeah, of this I'm industry. definitely like I if 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 you told me that I had to solve a math problem or get shot in the head, I would just <laughs> oh, I would, be like, you know what? Just oh, yeah. do it now. <laughs> I would take just do it, it now. Myself. Yeah, like, I I just, yeah exactly. Myself. Like I can't do anything. Like I'm just not good at science. I'm not good at math. I'm not good at really any of anything involving numbers because I'm not passionate about it. And I have a really hard time because I'm so stubborn doing anything that I'm not passionate about. And the other mm-hmm. things that I'm passionate about are creative things because that comes easily to yeah. me. And that's just who I am. I just I'm always thinking of new ideas and how I can express what I'm feeling. And that's just that's just who I am. Mm-hmm. That's what I am. And I'm just that's that it was a problem for me a lot in public school. I was gonna say I feel like school I got must have been really hard. bad grades. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> terrible. Oh, yeah. I got like an A plus. In all the classes that aren't considered important for some reason, and then um, all, I didn't, I got like C's and B's, and all the classes yeah. are like, you have to know this for college. <laughs> <laughs> Not with what I'm gonna know, I don't. <laughs> Do you, I, you know what? I'm 21 now, and uh, I guess I, I remember it like it was yesterday. <clears throat> You know, choosing to not move on to college, right? And I even did a semester of college, and I had been doing radio at the time extensively during high school. And I remember taking that leap and saying no to college. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to run my own business. I wanted to be creative as I wished. I just, I couldn't deal with papers. I couldn't deal with math classes anymore. I couldn't deal with answering to a ton of people above me just any longer. You know, and that was a scary move for me. Were you scared at all, kind of transitioning out of? public school and kind of doing, you know, on the road tutoring and then, you know, possibly not going to college? I ask myself if I made the right decision every day. Really? And that's good though. And then every single day I get the answer that I did. That's good. Yeah. But Making a big leap. I need I need that answer yeah. once a day or else I start to feel really hesitant. And that's just because I am very hyper like overly critical. Yeah. And I always wanna I'm always I'm a grass is always going to this type of person. Like I always feel like the grass is greener somewhere else. Like where yeah. I am, it's just I, I did it wrong. I'm not doing what I'm supposed mm. to be doing. And I, I constantly wonder if I had just stayed in public school, like what would my life be like right now? And is this the right decision mm-hmm. for me? Um, and then every day something happens where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is definitely the right thing to do. But until that moment comes every day, I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I be honest? I think about the exact same thing every yeah, single every day. day. Every yeah. day. You wake up and you're it's like, hard is to be this creative. the way that I like, should be living? Yeah. Because yeah. everyone always tells yeah. you the right thing to do is like, go to college and have a desk job. Yeah. Wear a suit every day. It's just like, oh, my God. Even thinking terrible. about that, I want to yeah. just throw up. And <laughs> then, you know, the other thing that I just like, just... Talking on like another level here in a sense that like, you know, thinking those thoughts and like leaving the studio, like just for us leaving the studio every day and leaving, you know, you think sometimes the question always comes up. One, am I good enough? And two, the amount of people that are constantly judging me, you know, am I making them happy? Do you feel that at all with this, this fame? Yet. <laughs> whenever you, whenever I go on my Twitter... Yeah, the, I could read through a hundred tweets that say, I love you so much. You are my biggest inspiration. And just see one that says, you suck. Ugh. I hate you. That's all it takes. And yeah. it's all it takes. That'll stick with you. To, yeah. Just just to like tear you down. And I am I'm constantly trying to just be like, no, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But sometimes every once in a while you're like, my God, like, yeah. why do all yeah. these people hate me? Right. Like, why? What have I done right. to you personally <laughs> oh, it'll drive you insane. that yeah. makes you hate me so much? This one time, I saw, I saw this tweet a couple days ago, and it was this girl, and she was like, I really like B. I really like B. Miller's music, but I hate her. She's so annoying or something like that. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, what are you talking about? I, was, I never, and I indirected her. I mean, like, I didn't tag. I don't think she knew it was about her, but I was like, Sweetie, I hope one day you can learn to love yourself. You can love yourself enough to learn to love other people. Because I just feel like people who do stuff like that and they say that they don't like someone else that they've never met, never had a conversation with, never had any interaction with whatsoever, and they think that they're annoying and mm-hmm. like don't like them, it's just because they have an issue with themselves. Right. And so whenever I feel really down about like the people that are judging me for no reason and just being so rude, yeah. um, I just think about that. Like They must be struggling oh, yeah. themselves. and. They have the only, unfortunately, the only way they figure out how to deal with that and like coping mechanism is to, to go out other of their way down. and like type on a keyboard right. and like it's sad. Right. And it is really sad. And I can't let that affect me because no. it's just those people are unimportant. I have to always remember to focus on 
the people who actually do matter who yeah. are able to support me. Right. And to focus on the music. Right. You know, and to focus on the product and everything yeah, that you're product. serving. And obviously you're serving a kick ass product right now because, you know, young bloods Bloods or blood? Blood. Bloods. Blood. Young blood <laughs> on the radio everywhere right now, which is huge. Yeah. I mean, come on. I saw the video of you. Uh, you heard your song on the radio for the first time. Most amazing experience ever. Come I on. yeah. Nah. I have the whole vi- the whole song was my mom was recording me the whole song and it's just a three minute video of me sobbing. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean like it's emotional. It's an it's emotional crazy. thing. It's crazy. It is because I feel like the goal. In, I mean, I know that the goal in most, you know, artist careers, you know, obviously you want to do a tour, you want to do a world tour, you want to do a headlining tour, but then second to that, like really close, is radio play. Right. And getting love, because I feel like radio is almost validation. Right. For what you put out there, because, you know, people like us are elected to determine what's good for, you know, the people to ingest. And it's like, it's valid, it's validation, it has to be. And to see a song grow, I mean, that's crazy. Right. And, you know, the reason... That so many musicians do what they do is to get their message across as many mm-hmm. people as they can and to mm-hmm. try to help people and be right. like, I'm there for you. I've experienced this too. And to know that that's what I am doing right now. When my uh, Hearing my song on the radio, I was like, oh my God, mm-hmm. everyone who's listening to this right now knows my message. And like, yeah. what if they like the song? And right. they go home and they look it up and like they fall in love with it and it becomes like that one song they listen to whenever they get right. upset. And that whatever. definitely is happening. Day. That's happening, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that is really what made me emotional. I was like, this is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to reach out to people and say, if you hear this song and you feel like you can relate to it, like mm-hmm. you're not alone. Right. That's crazy. And it was that's insane awesome. to me to hear that and be like, my music is actually being spread to people. Like that's insane. Yeah. And a message, a beautiful message, is yeah. truly being spread to people. It's not yeah. one of the, you know one of those BS songs that no, not you know at all. about something you know yeah. that nobody really cares about. <laughs> blah blah blah. No, you're spreading a message. And again, like we were talking before, like you know a lot of artists don't do that anymore. You know, yeah. a hit is a hit, and mm-hmm. you know, not, sad to say that not every hit needs a, you know, a beautiful message no. attached to it. Right. So you're kicking ass, man. Seriously. Thank you. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you. You're going on tour with Demi Lovato. Yep. That's huge. Can't complain. Yeah. Come I can't on. Complain. <laughs> Life is good. Are you excited? I am really excited. Plus, um, her little sister, Maddie, is one of my best friends in the world. And really? she's going to come. Oh, that's oh. awesome. And so I'm going to have my friend with me. You're touring with so that'll your best be, friend. That makes it 10 times better. Oh, I'm very so excited rad. for how, multiple reasons. How that's did you awesome. meet Maddie? LA being like all Hollywooded out? Maddie and. Uh, um, and her mom and her other sister Dallas came to one of the X Factor episodes okay. because nice. Demi was a judge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, I met them backstage and they're like, "Oh, we love you! Like, we get a picture with you." And I still have that picture. Like, me and Maddie, Maddie texted it to me at one point. And was like, "Oh my God, we're so ugly. What is this?" Photo? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I still have that photo of the first day we met. And then um, my mom and her mom really clicked. And then nice. they were texting like, "Oh, we should get the girls together." Yeah. Like they seemed to like each other. And then. We just hung out. That's and it awesome. Went from there. Hollywood, the only place where your parents still need to make your play dates at yeah, the age right? of sixteen. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's huge. I mean, have you worked on your stage show yet? Like, are you excited to get out there? Because, like, when you go out there, you're not just performing in front of. I mean, you've done X Factor before, but this is like a full set. Like, it's not just yeah. you know a hundred people in a club. I mean, she's doing stadiums or you know giant freaking oh. venues, arenas, arenas. Stadiums is her goal. Yes. She told us last yeah. time. Arena. She's still. I mean, arenas, arenas are, are arenas. Arenas are insane. Jesus. I, mean, you're still I think she should there. be proud. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She still. Do, I mean, like ten to twenty. A lot 000. of people play bars their whole life yeah. and never get past there. Yeah. So. I mean, that's huge. Are you ready? Are you pumped? I am ready. I think the bigger the audience, the more fun it is. The easier it is, to be honest. Like, really. A small audience is very oh, difficult yeah. to sing for. I can't even begin to. How would you feel <laughs> if you were pouring your soul yeah. out in front of you and 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 people it was four people in the room just staring at you with I their know. arms crossed? <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, it's so awkward sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, afterwards, of course, I was like, "Oh, that was so good! Like we loved it." It's like if you loved it, maybe you could right. have just you given me the scowl the whole yeah. time, <laughs> like, maybe a smile yeah. here and yeah. there. But when you're performing, it's like you're performing from people who are cheering the for you and know the words and they're screaming and yeah. it's insane. It's loud. Yeah. It's just like. It makes me want to do better when the people are cheering me on, you know, instead yeah. of just staring at me and like being like, "Is she good or is she not?" My my thing is when you're out there, right? Do you make eye contact with anything? Like when you're looking out, what are you thinking about? <laughs> What's going on to your mind? I try to make eye contact with many, as many people in the crowd as okay. I can. I usually look for the people that are singing along. I okay. usually look for. 
um, like girls or sometimes even guys who are singing along and then I'll like walk over down like I'll walk down the stage to wherever they're closer to and mm. I'll like bend over and I like look them straight in the eyes. That's cool. I point at people while I'm singing. And what's really amazing about that is like they smile so big and they start like yeah. they start like That's screaming the words moment. back yeah. at me and it's amazing. It's the best feeling. They'll in the remember world. that forever. Yeah. Like you just gave them an experience. Yeah. And a lot of times people like right in the front are filming. And sometimes I'll like go like right up in the camera of their cool. phone and sing like right into their phone. Well, you just hit like a crazy thing, right? Like you now make memories, right? Like anything you do from now on, like yeah. when you go up to somebody in a show, you're making a memory. Like yeah. you're you're making, part of their experience. You're part of their lives. There, your music oh becomes God. a part of their yeah. life. Yeah, that's like you're crazy. a mark on their life now. Oh, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> but that, oh my God! Now I'm thinking it, though. about all the songs that I hear from like six years ago and I think about like whatever I was doing at the time when that song was yeah. popular and like that's gonna be it's that's a, oh, you it's right you. now oh my that's god crazy. that's you right now bro. oh my god <laughs> someone who's like 16 now and is a huge fan of yeah. Youngblood like six years from now they'll look they'll look back and be like they'll hear that yeah. song and they'll be like oh I remember what I was doing yeah like, absolutely that's so weird that's what's great about music oh too is god. it takes you through your life in such a way that you re- it's I like never even thought about yeah. that yeah 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 <laughs> Wow. It's crazy. That is so weird. <laughs> who am I? <laughs> right? Oh my God. Describe your music real quick for people who've never heard you before. Just describe it. Pop with an edge. Pop with an edge. I like it. You're going to perform Youngblood right now? I think no, you are. I'm oh, you're leaving? Just kidding. Oh, no. okay, bye. <laughs> I don't like you guys. No. <laughs> Give me some insight on the song. Did you co wrote this one or did someone do it for you and you just felt like you were in it? I uh, This song was played to me by my manager okay. after we had finished. Um, all of the other songs for um, that we were going to record for the EP and the album. Okay. And I thought we were completely done. And um, he played this song for me, and I heard it, and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. But we didn't like the bridge, because the bridge was just a repeated chorus, and we're like, that's not that's not good. We have to yeah. fix that. So he said, if you can go in the studio with the writers of this song and write a whole new bridge, mm-hmm. yeah. this song could be a hit, potentially. Cool. And I, I was so passionate about the song. I was like, of course I'll do that because I thought the message was so huge and so great. And yeah. I felt it so deeply awesome. when I first heard it. I was like, I need to do this. And so I went into the studio and I clicked with the writer, luckily. Cool. And we wrote the core, I mean, the um, bridge. And I wrote the two. Actually, I'm, it's very weird because I normally write uh, lyrics better because mm-hmm. I can't I can't play instruments very well. Like I can play guitar, but I know like 10 basic chords mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah, I, I'm learning, though. I'm trying to get a little better. <laughs> but... um. I actually wrote the tune of the bridge. I was humming it, and they're like, oh, that's good. So I just hummed the tune of the bridge, and then the writers wrote the words over it. So I kind of wrote it. I had a little input there. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. You have a lot of stuff stuff on the horizon. I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, man. Thank you. You're a cool chick. You're welcome here whenever you want. Yeah, I remember. That. What if I just show up? Someone yeah, like hey, you said hey, it was walk, walk right in. Dude, I have friends that it's do true. that. Yeah, literally, they know, they know them out. at the front desk. They just walk in. We'll be moving studios soon, so I'll give you that address. Yeah, okay. You know, we'll build that rapport. I'll just show up one day. I'll yeah, surprise that's you. fine. You're We'd more love than welcome. That. Yeah, you're a killer. I'm excited to hear you perform. So yeah. let's do it. Okay. B Miller. Woo woo.